Glory to God. Welcome back to your way happy Bible study. We aren't going to wrap up because I had computer issues today. This was not Troy's fault. This was my fault. And we ended up starting about a half hour late. So we're he has been gracious to, enough to allow us to go an extra half hour so we can study our full three hours. Glory to the king. Okay. Now, where we were, we were in Revelation 10, 7, that talked about how the mystery of God should be finished. We are in 1 Corinthians 15, looking at 51 and 52, which discusses what the mystery of God is. The mystery of God is the regeneration and the rapture, okay? Because it's saying in verse 51 of 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. This is the mystery of God that it's talking about in Revelation. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, sleep is talking about physical death as we know it. It's talking about, it's called sleep because the bodies in the ground are going to be regenerated. It, it doesn't refer to them as dead because dead is implies that they won't ever be used again. We shall not all sleep. Spirit, it's sleep. Your body sleeps, but you leave your body. When you die, when you, die you leave your body, which is why your body's inanimate. It needs you in it to be animated. So when you leave it, it is what we would consider dead. The Lord calls sleep. He says uh, the bodies sleep in the ground. They do, it, it's kind of like um, kind of like a spacesuit. You know what I mean? If you're in it, it's animated. If you're not in it, it's lifeless and in storage. <laughs> Kind of like you put it in a box, put it in the ground, it's in storage waiting for you to come back to it. So that's what he's meaning when he says we shall not all sleep. And that also means when he arrives, there not everybody, not all the believers are going to have died when he arrives. So he says we shall not all sleep. We want, we're not all going to die physically, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Now, the twinkling of an eye is a unit of measurement on the Hebrew clock. It comes every night at sundown. It is the moment between day and night that is neither. It's called the twinkling of an eye. We know that he's coming at the Feast of Trumpets. Last trump. So it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Now, that's when the last trump is blown, is during that minute between day and night that is neither. And it is the last trump of the Feast of Trumpets. There's three trumpets with the feast. First trump, great trump, last trump. First trump at the beginning, great trump at the middle, last trump at the very end right in this moment between day and night that is neither the trumpet shall sound and this is telling us the exact moment of the rapture it's really cool he's saying the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed so in that moment between day and night that's neither the twinkling of an eye the trumpet sounds and it does this every year, okay? But when the correct year comes, this is what's going to happen. Now, this year at the Feast of Trumpets is not the correct year. We've been able to disqualify 2017 um, in many, you know, uh, in many ways, not just a couple of ways. There's a lot of reasons why it can't be 2017 biblically. It, the criteria... Uh, the biblical requirements are just not there for 2017, but they're all there for 2018. All prophetic roads lead to 2018 for the King's return. And we're going to have some really amazing events 
come in within the next year from now. Um, wow, our midpoint is next July. Somewhere after the constellation in September, that is from Revelation 12, 1 through 3, that's a once in a uh, human history appearance of this thing, of this particular constellation and, a, and planetary alignment. Um, that is telling us that we're close. Okay. It's like our one year warning. Uh, it comes September 23rd. This constellation does. It's one of John's stops on his journey through time. So it's very important. This constellation position in the scriptures is between seals five and six. Um, and that's exactly where we are right now between seals five and six. And the constellation is later on this month. And that is a fixed point in time and space. So the watchman can align. God warns us about everything he's going to do. So this constellation appearing is the warning saying, okay, these events are going to now take place. It's not the return of the king, but it is, uh, you know, kind of like a one year warning for the return of the king. So it says here, the dead shall be, it says at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now we know how this is going to work because we saw in Matthew 27 verses 52 and 53, how this happened. Now keep your spot and go over to Matthew 27, 52 and 53 once again. And the graves were opened. So this is how this is going to take place next year at the Feast of Trumpets when Jesus actually shows up. The graves are going to be opened. Now what that means, I don't know. Does it mean the dirt all disappears? Does it pile up on the side? Uh, who knows? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. The graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. So it's not a situation where these, these people are raised in their coffins and they're clawing their way out. It's not like that. Okay. It's not like the zombie movies and things like that. Plus they're not zombies. The zombies are those that take the mark. <laughs> so there are zombies. The ones that take the mark, they cannot die physically and their flesh rots off their bones while they are trapped in their body. Okay. Without escape. It's kind of a scary thing. If you uh, don't even think about taking the mark graves were open. Now we're going to examine how, how this could occur. The mystery. We're talking about the mystery of God. Remember the graves were opened. Many bodies of the saints which slept, they were dead in the graves, arose. Now they're, they are rising from the dead like Lazarus to flesh life again, kind of like we are now. They're going to be back. Those who have died uh, that you love are coming back. Okay. And came out of the graves after his resurrection so they come out of the graves. The graves are opened. They come out of these graves. I don't know if they climb out or what, but they come out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Like Lazarus, they were raised back to flesh life. But when Jesus raises you, you can never die again. You are immortal at that point. And so they went into the city, they went into the, to Jerusalem and talked to people and it really made a huge impression. All these people coming out of their graves. It was really, really scary, uh, sounding to me, but I, what would you think if you were in Jerusalem and you see all these people coming out of the cemetery and they're coming up to talk to you? It'd be horrifying, wouldn't it, for a lot of people if they don't know what's going on. So it looks like when Jesus shows up at the last trump, we have a repeat of Matthew 27, 52, 
and 53, where the graves are opened and the many bodies of the saints which slept arose. They come out of the graves and they're walking around and appearing to people. They're just as alive as you and me when they come out of these graves. Now, back at 1 Corinthians 15, um, 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, it gives us timing, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So when they are raised, uh, they can't ever die again. Once Jesus raises you, you cannot die again. And we shall be changed. That's those who are alive. Okay? So in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised, and we will all be changed. And I think what it means when it says changed, it's talking about kind of what, well, go over to Matthew chapter 17, to the front of the chapter, and let's look at verse 2. Well, let's look at, we'll do one, uh, verse 1 as well. And after six days, that's after 6,000 years, It's a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. This is prophecy right here. After six days, it's talking about after 6,000 years, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John. Notice he took one-fourth of the 12 disciples with him. He only took the ones that were closest to him. And when the rapture occurs, he's taking all of the children, but as far as the believers, he's only taking those that are closest to him. Probably about one-fourth of the believers are going to be ready. Now, how do you know if you're ready or not? The way you know if you're ready is you must be obeying the word here to be ready to obey it there. He's not going to take you there if you're not ready to obey the word. You have to obey it here before you're ready to obey it there. Okay? Now, it says here, after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, those are the ones closest to him, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. So he's saying he takes up one-fourth of his disciples, one-fourth of the believers probably are ready, and bringeth them into a high mountain apart. So he, they have, he's taken those closest to him, and he's taken them up, and was transfigured before them. Now, this may be the change. The word says that we will see Jesus like he is because we will be like him. You have to be like him to see him as he is. And was transfigured before them. His face did shine as the sun. And I think this may be the change. And this may be what we end up looking like once we are changed at as described by Paul in 1 Corinthians. Tra he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. <laughs> I think we're going to shine as the sun like this. And his raiment was white as the light. So when we're changed, that's when we get our white robes. Okay? And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Now they were also... Um, in this glorified state. But see, Jesus transfigured and then transfigured back again. And that's not, I, I, you know, I don't know. I think it's possible that Moses and Elijah tra are transfigured and then transfigured back again too. Because it looks like they could be the two witnesses. And the two witnesses are alive and well on this planet right now. They're probably in the Garden of Eden. Because, see, you had Lazarus, Jairus' daughter. You had all these guys from uh, Matthew 27, 52, and 53 that arose, but it doesn't say they ascended. It says Jesus is the only one to ever ascend and descend. But once he raises you, you can never die again. So you've got immortals 
who were raised by Jesus, who are still here 2,000 years later and they're still alive. Well, where are they? It's entirely possible that actually the only place they could be is the Garden of Eden because that is a place on the earth where you have the tree of life. You cannot live 2,000 years without the tree of life. Okay? They're given access to the tree of life after they are regenerated. I really think that's probably the case. Now, where is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It gives us it gives us information where the Garden of Eden was, but that was before the continents separated and all that. So we we don't really know. Uh, some people believe that they know where it's at, but it could be one of those um, one of those things where you just can't see it. It exists uh, outside of our ability to view it. Um, and there's an angel guarding the way to the tree of life with a flaming sword that goes every which way. But those, I think that's probably where Elijah and Moses are right now. And that's where they were when Jesus called them. Okay. And, uh, and actually they were transfigured. I think to be able to travel like that, you have to be transfigured. But uh, they are obviously not going to stay transfigured because they're probably the two witnesses that show up and they are able to be killed uh, during that time. Now, the Antichrist can't kill them, but a, a creature from the bottomless pit when it is opened at trumpet number five, the creature from the bottomless pit is able to kill the two witnesses and they die at trumpet number six. Okay. I know this is a lot of information. Uh, praise God. It's all going to go on video and it's, uh, uh, you can go through it and pause it and look these things up and write your notes and all that. Uh, but I think that that's what it means when it says we're changed transfigured so you can be changed to make the trip to the holy city since we can't breathe in space and then change back when you get there okay i think that's possible because we saw jesus change and then change back and we know moses and elijah were transfigured but they're also mortal they're going to be mortal during the tribulation period somewhat because they're able to be killed Nobody can kill them, though, except for that creature out of the bottomless pit. That's interesting, isn't it? Okay, back to Revelation now. So we we diverted to talk about the mystery of God. In, Rev, in Revelation 10, 7, but the, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, this is the trumpet judgments, okay? When he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. So that is the raptures and the regenerations okay in the days of the voice of the seventh angel that when he shall begin to sound the mystery of god should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets in verse 8 and the voice which i heard from heaven spake unto me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth um, so this, it has, there's a book in the hand of this angel. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. I think what this book is that John eight is the information from the book of Revelation that was then replayed in his mind for him so he could write it down with accuracy and not forget anything. Because everything's written in the book. They put it inside John so he could write the book of Revelation. In verse 10, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. 
what he's saying is that these are horrific things. These are uh, to, to understand what you're looking at and to see what you're looking at is horrifying for, for us as, as mortal human beings. Okay. In verse 11, and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So the book of Revelation is the result of John's traveling through time as God took him to various stops on the timeline. He stopped uh, when he stopped during the reign of Pope John Paul II. Another position he's going to be stopping at to observe and write is September 23rd this month with the star constellation from Revelation 12, 1 through 3. Okay, and that verifies our position as between seals 5 and 6, less than a year from the defiling of the temple and just around about a year from the constellation appearing until the king arrives. It's going to be really cool. I'm so excited. Okay, in Revelation chapter 11. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Now this is on the earth. This is not the temple in heaven. This is proof that we are going to see a third temple rebuilt within the next less than one year. After the constellation appears, you have a situation where things appear in the stars and then they manifest on the earth. Well, kind of like the blood moons, nothing happened right on the day of the blood moons, but six weeks to six months later, you have the manifestation of the event. When the tetrad came and the blood moons appeared, six weeks to six months later, you know, you had a blood moon every six months on the feast days, but Blood moons are war for Israel. Bad news for Israel. And Israel has been, you know, was really engaged in several um, operations. The IDF was Operation Pillar of Cloud, Operation This and That. They were fighting pretty much through the entire Tetrad. Now we have a triad of blood moons that comes that is straddled over the year 2018, January, July, and January 2019. The one in July is our sixth seal, okay? Now, we're going to go through the evidence of the return of the king at some point um, again soon. And we'll go through it all, but I do want to uh, get as much of the word of God verse by verse as possible for you. Um, onto video and share it with your friends the way, the way happy Bible studies share them if God's teaching you share them please everywhere if he's teaching you okay if he's teaching you give others a chance to learn to and share the videos and recommend them to others if you benefit from them if you don't don't even worry about it <laughs> but if you do then then share that with others, okay, uh, so they can learn too. Now, in verse 2, but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's the second half. The temple will be defiled. They are going to tread down uh, the temple mount, the holy city, and the temple. For 42 months, that's the second half. That's where all the trumpet judgments are coming. In verse 3, <clears throat> And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Now here comes our two witnesses. And they shall prophesy 1,203 score days, clothed in sackcloth. Now on our timing that we're looking at here, it says the two witnesses prophesy 1,260 days. That is three and a half years equivalent to the second half. The Jews flee for 12, uh, 1,260 days as well. 
That's the second half, 300, uh, uh, three and a half years. But the key here is to understand that the two witnesses prophet, do prophesy exactly 1260 days, but they don't make it all the way to the end. They're killed at the sixth trumpet. Now, if the trumpet judgments are equidistant as the seals have presented themselves, let's show, I'll show you the birth pangs. You have the seals have been coming in a pattern of one seal per year since 2013 when the Antichrist snake in a dress, Pope Francis, got his crown and began going forth trying to put all the pieces of the Catholic Church back together again like Humpty Dumpty. Okay? But these, these two witnesses... Well, let me finish showing you the birth pangs. You've got the seals presenting it one per year since 2013. Now you've got seven judge trumpet judgments within three and a half years. That's your second half. If those trumpet judgments are equidistant, that means one trumpet judgment every six months. See how they're getting closer together like birth pangs? Now, if they are equidistant and we have a trumpet judgment every six months, we would have to back up from the very end of the trib about six months. And that's where the, the two witnesses are killed by the creature that comes out of the bottomless pit. So if you, you would have, to, there's 1260 days would end six months prior to uh, the end of that second half, which means their 1260 days start and they show up six months prior to the temple being defiled. <laughs> so if that's the case, we expect the two witnesses by about February. <laughs> the two witnesses to be in Jerusalem by February. We are about to see the coolest things ever, ever. It's going to be the most amazing next year of your entire life, okay? And we need to expect a lot of bad things to be coming, but these prophetic things are coming. The treaty, the rebuilding of the temple, the resumption of the oblations and sacrifices, the uh, image of the beast being set up in the temple, the sacrifices and oblations being ceased, the defiling of the temple. You've got armies gathering around Jerusalem while the temple's being built. At the midpoint, which would be July 27th of 28, I'm mean, sorry, July 21st is our midpoint of 2018 on the 9th of Av. That is where your midpoint is. Okay, and that is where the treaty is breached and the Jews have to flee. Now, as we obviously, since we have not seen the treaty yet, it only lasts long enough to get the temple rebuilt. Now, it doesn't last very long at all. It is a seven year treaty, but it doesn't last even a year. Okay. Now, he says, I will, in verse 3, I will give power unto my two witnesses. They shall prophesy 1,203 score days, that's 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. Now, sackcloth is itchy and horrible, and they're going to be prophesying in this, so they're not going to be in a really great mood. They're going to be busting the Jewish people's chops and teaching them about the new covenant the Messiah, and how things really are. In verse 4, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Who's, who's the God of the earth? Well, our God is God, but I think what this is at this time, during this time, um, See, these two witnesses, they stay when the believers are evacuated. They stay. And 
I think what this is trying to say is that, see, before right before we go, you have Satan and one third, the evil angels, all of the evil angels, which are one third, uh, are cast down to the earth. Satan takes over this planet as dictator and places the Pope snake in a dress uh, on top of this world government. And then 10 kings who have no kingdom as yet will be administrating over 10 world regions. There's your, there's your new world order. Okay. Uh, we're down at the bottom here.